Hello everybody. In this Python tutorial, we're going to go over a few different examples of how you can apply styles and conditional formatting to your pandas data frames. A few notes before we get started. This works best in a notebook environment, such as Jupyter Notebooks. The styling is accomplished using CSS. This is mainly for data frames. To use with a series, you can use series two frame dot style. For your data frames, the index and columns must be unique. The styles and conditional formatting is mainly intended for summary data frames. So you probably wouldn't want to do this with a very large data frame. For the styling, it applies to the values, not to the index or the columns. And last but not least, features will likely be added and possibly breaking changes in future releases. For the imports, we're going to use pandas and numpy. The data frame that we're going to use for our examples looks like this. So we have 10 rows and 4 columns. For our first example, we're going to apply a format style to column B, here. So originally column B looks like this, and you can see we have 6 numbers after the decimal point. However, what we want to do is to limit that to 2. And to do that, we can reference our data frame, dot style, dot format, and then we use a dictionary. And the key of the dictionary is the column that we want to apply the style to. And then here we have the style, which limits the decimal points to two. Okay? And you can see the output of that here. For the next format example, we want to set some formatting for the actual table. And let's go ahead and run that. And what we did here is we set the background color to beige, the text color to black, the border color to black, the border width to one pixel, and the border style is solid. Now if we change the font color to blue, you can see it updates. And you can play around with these styles to change it to whatever you like. Next, in this example, we're going to show how you can highlight a specific number. So one way to accomplish this is to create a function, and then use the dataframe.style, apply, and put the function in the round brackets. So to create the function, the argument that it's going to work with is number. We set that number equal to 7. And whatever number you're trying to find, you can change that here. And then we assign that to the criteria. Then for the highlighting, we're going to use a yellow background color. Here. So let's go ahead and run it. Now one thing we've done to help understand this code just a little bit more is we've gone ahead and we've put a print in so you can see exactly what it's doing. So this would be column A, and this would be column B, column C, and column D. And you can see as it looks at each number in the data frame, if the number equals 7, then it makes the background color yellow. And you can see that pattern here. So for example, in column A, here, that would be this. So we go down to index 6, and it highlights it yellow. Same thing here. So we start at index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The next 7 that we see is in column C, here. So that would be here. And that is in index 7. Once again, you go over to index 7, you can see it meets the criteria, and we have a background color of yellow. Okay, so in general, one of the patterns that you can use to create your styles or conditional formatting is to create a function and then reference your data frame dot style and then use some type of apply method. You could also use apply map. In this case, we've used apply. And then you put in your function. Here we have another example where we want any negative numbers to have red text. Okay, so we've gone ahead and created our function. And this function returns a string with the CSS property color red for negative, and for non-negative, the text is black. So similar to the previous example, we go ahead and reference the data frame dot style. We use apply map, and we put in our function. Let's go ahead and run it. And you can see any negative numbers in the data frame are now red. Next, in this example, we're going to go over how you can highlight any null or NAN not a number values. So let's go ahead and run it. And you can see that the NANs are now red. 
To accomplish this, we use dataframe.style, highlight null, and for the null color, we put in red. For our next example, we're going to go over how you can apply size bars to your table. And the size of the bars will correspond to the number in the cell. So let's go ahead and run it. And let's use column C as an example. So here we just have numbers going from 0 to 9. The size of the bar corresponds to the size of the number. And the bar gets bigger as we go down. Now to accomplish this, we use dataframe.style.bar. For the subset, we use a list of the columns that we want to apply the styling to. And then for the color, we've used yellow. Moving on. Here we have two more examples where you can highlight the max and the min. Here we have an example of the max. And in this case, we're just finding the largest number in each column. If there are duplicates, it will highlight all the duplicates. So in this column, the largest number is 9. In column B, it's 0.97, and so on. And to do that, we use dataframe.style, highlight max, and then you put in your axis. And here we have some notes on the axis. You can also do the same thing with the min. And in this case, it just finds the minimum number in each column. Okay, so for our last example, we're going to go over how you can apply a heat map style to your data frame. The data frame that we're going to use is the cars data frame from the Vega data sets. And it looks like this. However, in this case, we've gone ahead and applied the correlation function, and then we use style.backgroundgradient, and inside the round brackets, we choose a color map, which in this example is cool warm. Let's run it. And what this will do is it will apply heat map colors based on the correlation of this table. So for example, the darker the red, the higher the positive correlation. The darker the blue, the higher the negative correlation. So you can see here for displacement and cylinders, that's a very high positive correlation. And then here for weight in pounds and miles per gallon, that's a high negative correlation. Okay, that's all we have for this tutorial. Join us again next time.